ever heard of Craig O'Shaughnessy. Craig O'Shaughnessy is really big on first four. You'll see him, Craig, on uh, Wimbledon, Australian Open, French Open, US Open, on TV talking about first four shots. Uh, this guy here has done a lot of the research into the junior side of that with Craig. Um, and you, your book was fantastic. And uh, guys, I'll give you Sterling Schroeder. So thanks, this is um, amazing to be here. It's been an incredible journey. 2012, I've already been coaching almost 15 years. And I was on the high school court coaching my girls. And I coached high school tennis for 12 years. And this was in 2012. And I had taken over the varsity team in 2011. And you can, I've got so much resource online. You can, you can go in and, and just watch the story. I tell the story. But in a nutshell, I watched two of my top players preparing for a conference match, and they were, they were playing out points. So I returned play out points. And then all of a sudden, what was hidden from plain sight, I saw. And I went, none of these points are going over four shots, except for a few here and there. So I told the girls to stop, and I said, I want you to drop feed from the baseline and play out the point, just like you're playing, very competitive. The shot rally pretty much doubled. So if, if they were doing two or three shots, it went to five to six shots. And I went, wait a minute, go back to start serving, returning S1, R1, which is the first shot after the return, the first shot after the serve. And the numbers dropped again. And, I, and I, that's when my mind just went, wait a minute. So then I developed the point tracking chart and I had every player that wasn't playing in every single match for the next three years track every single shot of every single match, singles and doubles. And we had three doubles and six singles. Okay, that's a lot of data. 2015, I, I came across a man named Craig O'Shaughnessy. I read an article about him on Facebook. And I went, wait a minute. They're doing, somebody's doing this at the pro level. But I, I had never even heard of Craig in 2012, 13, and 14. So I met up with Craig at the PTR's World Symposium in 2012, or 2015. And we sat down, and he goes, all right, I want to hear your story. Tell me what's going on. So I told him. And he sat there and was like mouth open going, holy cow. Because they at that time they really didn't have num these numbers on the jun in the junior rankings. Okay? It, and this everybody says, okay, well these are just pro numbers. No, they're not. They they're they're eight and under numbers. I've tracked orange ball, they're right there. Track green dot, they're right there. Because unless the competition is seriously uh, lopsided. Okay, the numbers actually drop in that case, but all things equal. So I want to talk to you about transformation. Everybody, take a deep breath. Okay. So when I think about transformation, I think about a butterfly. I think about what that butterfly was, and it didn't look a thing like the butterfly when it started out. And then it goes through series of transforming into that beautiful butterfly, the caterpillar. And it goes into the cocoon, and it just doesn't look all that great. But then it just starts to, you can't see what's happening on the inside, but it's transforming. And that's what I want to bring to you today, is how can you transform your practice court? Because everything that has been shared this whole weekend is fantastic. And there's, you can take this, and you can take this, and then you start to transform your court from where it was to another level, okay? And we've, talked, and we've heard a lot about observation. We've heard about the difference between subjective judgment and just pure observation. And the numbers are black and white. And there is, it's starting to get out there more and more because Craig's been crying it out. I've been talking about it a lot. And people are starting to realize, they, and so 
what I would ask you to do is listen to what we are saying. We're not saying that when you just train the first four shots, you're training a player to end the point. That is not what at all we're saying. Actually, we're saying the opposite. When you train the first four shots and they become more productive at that, and the first four being serve, return, S1, R1, they actually become more consistent in the extended rally or into the patterns of play, which is five to eight, the next two shots. So it's actually the opposite of what you think. You think, oh, if they just train the first two shots, they're not gonna be able to rally. It's actually not true at all. The, op the opposite will happen. They'll actually be able to rally a lot better. Okay? The hardest part about playing a point is getting the point started. That's the hardest part. Because once the point goes, you start to get into what's called a flow state or a play state, where your instincts begin to take over no matter what level you're at. And the more you do it, the more balls you play, the more you begin to flow, right? And then what happens? The point ends, and what do you have to do? What do you have to do, guys? Reset. You have to reset. You have to refocus. And so the hardest part about, about extending a point past four shots, two shots on your side, two shots on yours, really it's two, is focus and refocus. Focus and refocus. How many of you have players that spend at least six to eight seconds between points? Exactly. Like most, most, most kids, they have point hands. They're like, oh, whatever. They respond, yes, and then they just walk over, pick up the ball, and go. Okay. So where was their time to refocus? So that actually adds to the numbers dropping because they're not focused. They don't, they don't even know where they're going with the ball. Okay. Clouds and dirt. Clouds are strategy. The dirt is tactics. Okay. I'm going to talk in big concepts today. I'm going to talk about the clouds, and then we're going to get into the dirt, the games of the dirt. So I'm going to we're going to get into we're going to do three games today. Um, and they're all based on point play. Okay. You too. Let's go. All right. <coughs> so Mark and Matt, they are playing on the short court. They are powerful right-handed players. Guess what? They're playing with their left hand. Okay? And everybody, everybody, you see the point tracking chart? If you have a pen, I would like for you, wait, no, no, I would like for you, you got a ball, to track the, the number of successful hits that they make over the net. So you don't track the air. So if you go serve, two, one, two, three in the net, it was a two. You don't, you don't count the one that did not make it in the court. Okay, you ready? So you ready to play a game? So you play a seven point tiebreaker. Okay, you're gonna serve the whole time. Okay, and when we're done with this, he's gonna serve the whole tiebreaker. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, go. Thanks, sir. How many shots? Three. Three. Thank you. Five to be three, three. Oh, 
what's great when when we started working with the concept of training transforming the practice score I got a coach from the from the UK his name is Dan Travis and we began a new project called the art of winning and it's the transform it's transforming the practice score and he has been writing articles on mental toughness hand uh, teaching how players how to deal with mental their mental and emotional side because as everyone in this room can attest to, you can have the most beautiful forehand or beautiful backhand in the world, but there's a lot more that has to go into that. Movement, reactions to points. Now, let's do it again. You can do this, in, you can do this with any type of format. Like you can go, he serves a whole game, he serves a whole game. You can play it like a normal tiebreaker to, you know, Set like that. But the idea is to, we're just tracking numbers right now. We're just trying to get data so we know where to go next. We don't know where to go if we don't know where we are. Okay, so you serve me. What number was that? 
Seven? We, we, we still haven't seen an extended rally yet, y'all. Yeah, we did 12. We did 12? Oh, we got one. Okay, great. Awesome. Five, two. Five, two. Now, when I did that, when I first doing this with my girls, okay, I didn't, I didn't try to tell them what to do. I just wanted to see what the, what the numbers were going to be. Okay. Now, can anyone tell me, raise your hand, class, raise your hand. First one to raise your hand, I got a call. Why did I have these guys play left-handed today? No, because that's how your kids feel. That's exactly how your kids feel. How you feel like playing left-handed on a short court with a red ball. That's exactly how your kids feel when they're out on the court, trying to play this game. That's it. All right? And because of that, like, was it, then if some shots felt awkward, some, fit, some shots felt good, and these guys, these guys can play, right? But I had them, I had them, I had you experience, okay, what you're dealing with. And to make sure that the numbers were accurate. These guys would have played right-handed with a red ball with a 27-inch racket. Are you kidding me? We'd have had longer rallies. What do you think? Unless I told you all to go at it. <laughs> right? Yeah, then, you could, then they bomb aces and stuff like that. But I, wanted to, I want you to get a, a clearer picture of what's really going on. Now, here's where we go. Here's how we transform. You ready? We're gonna do, we're gonna do first strike point games. This is, a game, this is the first game I ever created. I want you to think of a bullseye, like a target, okay? The middle target has an S in it. The next ring has a P, and the next ring outside has a G. So if this is the GPS system. The, the S is shots, the P is point, and the, and the G is game. You need two shots to win a point. You need two shots in a row to win a point. You need two games in a row. Sorry, you need two points in a row to win a game. That's it. You only need two points in a row to win a game. Okay? So the power of the number two is absolutely incredible, as well as the number three. The number two and the number three are the most powerful numbers in tennis, and they show up everywhere. And they're very significant, okay? But especially the number two. It's everywhere. It's riddled, okay? So, we're going to play first strike point games, and here's how it goes. If you, if you serve and get an ace, it's two points to the server. If it's a return winner only, it's two points. Return winter, winner only. Okay, all right. If you hit, if you hit fir your first two shots over the net and in, you get a first strike point. Put it in your pocket. Keep playing like Mario Kart. Okay, you too. If you hit the first two shots over successfully, you get a first strike point, and then you play out the point. Whoever wins the point gets a winning point. So you can earn up to two points or zero. We'll see. Or just one. If the point ends before either one of them hit two shots over. So we're going to keep score, play seven-point tiebreaker, and do must win by two.
Two, three, two. Good. Yeah, three, two. That's right. Three, two. Three, two. I like it. It's giving them that first strike. Yeah, first strike and win. Two, three. Oh, yeah. Tried to go for a winner, but he lost one point. The only the winning point. So what is it now? Three, three, three all. Three all. Right? Three all. Now what's the score? Nine. Oh no, wait. Uh, ten. Eight. Ten eight. Six. Game. Game. Oh my God. We just saw transformation between these two players. It was it's it's radical. And guess what? You're gonna be watching again because we're filming all this. <laughs> You're gonna be able to see how these guys started out and they weren't really sure about their left hand. And all of a sudden, we introduced a simple scoring system based on you got to make the first two shots. And where did your focus go? Where did yours go? That is the universal answer. Every single time I've, I've asked it, the last almost eight years. Ask the player, where's your focus now? Up, coach. Never, I never had one player go, that's just worse. Hey, how was your reaction to losing a point? Not good. It was. Looked pretty good to me. Inside. But not inside. All right, what did you feel like you had to do at six off? Oh, I mean, I hit my two balls in. What about you? Yeah. Make, 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 the first, make the first two shots, man. I've got to get that first right point. Now, here's what's interesting about this game. If you play this like a regular tiebreaker, you're, you're not going to get another effect that you can get, okay? Now, when, when boys play, let's, let's say over all spectrums, up to you know, boys and men, do men and boys typically hold serve or break serve? Hold serve. What do the women do? Yes. Now, this was, this was when I created this game, I wasn't thinking about this, okay? It wasn't until about eight months later, it hit me again. When you're serving, when you, you serve out, when you're serving, do you have the advantage in first strike points? Why? You get first serve. You get the first serve. You get, you get the advantage in your first serve. You get the advantage You're typically going to already imagine striking your forehand or your bigger shot. Okay. All right. I like where you're going. I like you're almost there. 
But watch this. The returner also getting his own winner. It's back in with two. That's true. But how many winners were hit today? Thank you. No. So that's a valid point, but it didn't happen. Yeah. And it's not going to happen, but about 10% of the time you're going to see. And it's only going to happen if it's a really weak second serve, and that player is focused in. Right? So here's what happens. When you're the server, can you earn your first strike point and the winning point and deny the returner zero, like nothing? No, you can surplus one ball and you as many as one. That's right. That's right. You can go surplus one and, 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 and you, you don't make your R1. So as a returner, what do you have to do to, to break the serve? If he's serving the whole time, what do you have to do? No, you have to make your R1. If you don't make your R1, you're out of this game. There's no way you're winning. Okay? Now, if you're serving, what do you really need to focus on? Okay. The first one. Right? But do you feel a sense of confidence yeah. because you're serving? Yeah. Right. So this game makes the server feel confident, ladies. And men, it's tough. It's tough to break serve in this game. You got the serve, guys. How about breaking some? You better make your R1 or you're out. Right? And, and what happens is, even as high, when you start going up in level, okay, it's even more prevalent. Like, it's wide open with kids that are, you know, high school kids, maybe even beginner kids. Like, I see it with eight-year-olds, okay? It's there, but it, it's even more, like, eye-opening the more you, the higher level you go up. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. We're going to, sh so that was shots, right? That's the middle of our bullseye. Yes, question. Would, would we vote to say that because tennis is a front-running sport, typically, that the aspect of the game helps that aspect of even more mentally, like because most typically you're trying to get ahead and the game is geared to errors a lot. So this serve plus one, because I know I'm the server, I'm typically going to be ahead no matter what. So it gives me more confidence to be ahead. That's exactly right. Because they're already getting broken, serve a lot, right? Mm -hmm. we, you need this is a great one to boost right. their confidence. Okay. For the guys, they they need to return. Yeah. And return one back. Right. See, I don't think of shots as isolated shots unto themselves. That's why the number two is important. If you if you train a player in two shot sequences, okay, then one shot is related to another shot. Okay. Did you feel yourself go ISM? Individual shot? Yes. Yes. Did you feel yourself go ISM? Right. What happened? Did it break down or did it sustain? It broke down. ISM does not is not as unsustainable. Isolated shot making is unsustainable. Trying to hit winners is unsustainable. It produces more forced error, unforced errors, right? So there's six ways you win a point: two unforced errors, one by you and your opponent; two winners, one by you and your opponent; and then two forced errors by you and your opponent, right? So the extremes are where. Where are the extremes if we line them up? Unforced, forced, winners. Where are the extremes? Winners. winners and unforced errors. So we don't focus on those. We focus on how can we force our opponent to make an error and how can we keep ourselves from being forced into an error by make sure we reset. How was your resetting when you started to play this game? Man, it was all, it, it picked up quick. Okay? It was subtle. But that's the thing about tennis. It's the subtle things that make the big difference. You only win tennis matches by a little, not by a lot. Okay? And that leads us. Any more questions about first right point? And we're going to go. And, you, and, and I promise you, you can email me, you can text me after you start playing this with any like, testimonies or questions, and I will answer you back. Okay? I'm here, I'm here to help you get through this because... To me, it transformed me as a coach completely, okay? And I've seen other coaches. I've mentor coaches all over the world, and it's transforming their kids. I have one coach in the U.K., and his winning percentage for all his players has gone up 86%. 86% of his players are winning now that weren't winning before. It's hard to argue with the numbers. It's there. And they're doing first strike point. They're doing deuce or wild. That's what we're going to do next.
The next, in your bullseye, you have shots in the middle. That's what you're really trying to hit. Two shots in a row, and after that, you reset and go two shots in a row, and then you reset and go two shots in a row. And I want you all to think about, I want you two to think about that, right? As you're playing Deuces or Wild, because you don't get a first strike point. This is a different game, right? But here's how you play it. You have to win two points in a row to win the game. And when you do, you get the game. And we're going <coughs> to... this 0, 1, or 1, 0. Because you only got to win two points to get the game. So it's 0, 1. Okay. He, he was up. Uh, oh, wait. You were down 0, 1. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Man, okay. Good. Should have been. So it's one zero Now what's the score? One zero. Wait, 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 wait. Is it your last serve? That was number four. It's his girl. It's a wash. I say it. I No one wins that game in this game. No one wins uh, if it's if the serve switches and no one won two in a row. In deuces or wild, we call it a wash. Because I want you, I want the player to try to win two points in a row on their serve, or on or when they're returning. We're not going to carry over. That's the next game convergence, where you carry over points in a row from game to game to game. But that game is built on momentum. This game is built on can I just win two points in a row? And I want to give you four points to do it because I don't want this person to serve till the cows come home. Mm. I'd like to see it switch. Nope. <laughs> but I'm down now. Is that well? Yeah. It was out. Yeah. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, oh, that's the same way. You won. You won. You won. You won. <laughs> Now what's the score?
Uh, ace. Yes. Okay, so in this game, aces are just worth one point. Double falls are just worth one point. So we're not playing first set points. We're playing two points in a row. So what's the score? Two one. Two one. In a set. It's going to happen on the first game, the second game, and definitely the fifth game. Not saying it couldn't happen anywhere else. Those games are real, they're going to, they're going to have the most mini battles. A mini battle is when it's just going back and forth. You know, one zero zero one. One zero zero one. Because you're always you're always looking to win points in a row. Okay? Because that's the only way you can win a game. You must win two points in a row to win a game either at the beginning, middle, or end of the game. If you're playing uh, to uh, win by two, but even if you're playing at, player that wins two points in a row is gonna have a huge advantage to win a no ad. And I don't particularly like no ad personally, but I understand that it's a part of scoring. So, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? Because you've got, if you win two points in a row, you have what we call the momentum, okay? So y'all come to the net real quick. Let me have your racket. Momentum is the racket, okay? That is, we're gonna call that momentum, okay? You win two points in a row. Thank you, you have momentum, okay? You win two points in a row, the momentum goes here. You didn't take the momentum, you just got it back to in between. Now they're fighting for it. Now you win two points in a row, you have the momentum. You win a point in, you win a point, you win a point. Who has the momentum? He always does because he's a pass. You get split all day if you win two points okay. in a row. So two points in a row, is we call, I call that a momentum point. Right. And three points in a row, I call it a conversion. Got it. So ready? Watch this. So we're going into conversions. You win two points in a row. Okay. You win another point in a row. That momentum point just turned in or transformed into a conversion point. Now you have one conversion. Put that in your pocket and hold on to it, baby. Because a conversion is big momentum. Because if you're up 40 love, you got big momentum, baby. If you're up 30 love, 80% of, of the time, the person that's down wins the point at 30 love. So it's going to go to 30-15, 80% of the time. And if it goes to 40-15, same thing. 80% of the time to 85% of the time, it goes 40-30. Momentum. So now we're going to play conversions. Okay? You're going to play 15-30-40 game. Okay? You, it's, we're going to play no ad scoring. Let's just throw it in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to call out the conversion score first, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, 0, and then the regular score after that, the game score. So you're going to call conversion score, game score. I know, it, it almost, I told you, some of you, your heads were going to explode. But actually, after you do it, you're like, oh man, this is easy. Because I'm even thinking about the game score. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking about how many points can I win in a row, okay? Zero zero. Zero zero. zero. What's happened to their rally lane? Increasing. They're making their first two shots. What's the score? Zero zero zero. Did you win the point? Yeah. Then it's one zero. Or you lost the point? Not one point. So it's one zero. 15 love. Oh, I thought the conversion point you get on third. No, no, no. You're counting how many? You're counting the conversion score. Okay. Like I'm trying to get. So it's 15 odd because one, one. No, 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 no. no. Watch, watch, okay. watch, watch, watch what happens. It's 1 0, 15, 15 love. And you need to focus right now on winning this point. 
So use your best pattern. Make your first two shots. This is coaching right here. <laughs> Make your first two shots with your best pattern. You, you've got to stop him from winning two points in a row. You're not focused on winning the point. This is this will mess with your head, but I'm telling you, it will literally, oh my God. You've got to stop him. You've got to stop him. Because if he wins two points in a row, he has the okay. momentum. You don't want him to have the momentum. You want to stop it, but then put it back in the middle. Okay, here we go. So run your best pattern. Two shots. Okay. I like that. No, but I like that. Because I'll go, oh, yeah, I like that. Because like he pinned him in the corner, made a stretch, came in. That's fine. Okay, now, risk reward. We have risk reward. It's still there. Two zero. Two zero. Very low. Now, oh my God. Dude. You gotta stop him. You gotta stop him from winning three in a row. Okay. So he's gonna. Okay. <laughs> see that? Did y'all see that? Okay. This, that's what we call playing not to lose. He can. Af I'm sorry. Playing. Yeah. Playing not to lose. He can afford to lose the next point. Can he? Yes, he can. He's got a momentum point, y'all. He can afford. So where did pressure go on this side of the net? It was what? Lifted. And that's over there. And that is dumped on you. Man, you are privileged. Who said pressure is a privilege? Um, she was right. Billie Jean King said pressure. Not she was the first one, but she made it known. Right, right, Bill? Pressure? Dude, it's a privilege. You have the pressure. Guess what pressure does? It's like the frame of a picture. And the picture is called focus. Pressure will focus you. The only thing you can do right now, Matt, is check out. Checking out is not being able to deal, not understanding what pre how pressure is an advantage for you. He is at a disadvantage right now because pressure has been lifted. So I'm going to tell you, this is how you. This is how I've I've I have learned a lot. Of, I, I know a lot of ways to get a player to uh, focus, but I'm going to tell you this. Based on, because we're everything's rooted into the data, two shots in a row, two points in a row, two games in a row. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Dude, pick out your best pattern. Mark, okay? I, I want you, if you go big shot, I want you to go big target. Like straight down the middle of the court, or if we had a normal court, I would say like this is the corner, inside corner of that corner, because those three touch lines, these three touch lines, I want you to go inside corner. So once you go inside corners or right up the gut and cage him <coughs> and make him play. Make him play. Make him play. Because, brother, the temptation to go ISM is all over your face right now. <laughs> okay, that's a fault. Call him. Like, I stand up here, and here's what I'm doing. Fingers crossed by that. Oh my God, I hope this works. <laughs> you really think I'm doing that? Oh my God, I hope this works. I hope he wins the point, and it will prove that Sterling was right. No, Sterling's not right. The numbers are right. All I'm doing is showing you what the numbers are showing us, okay? Now, what's the conversion score? 0 1. Yes. 30 15. 30 15. Oh. Focus, convert, momentum. If it, it, it wasn't for the column, but he's he's playing the column. So now what's the conversion score? One zero. One zero. Forty fifteen. Who has all the pressure? You, my friend. Now the temptation to go ISM. Is through the roof. Because guess what? It's 5 2. This is set point. You will go ISM. Because you're trying to get out of the point. And if your nerves are racing inside, which all kids do at match point, if your nerves are racing inside, you need to get out of this point. I don't want to play, coach. I just want it to end so I can win. I want to end so I can win. 
What you got to do is you got to play. You got no. You just got to play. Don't worry about winning. You got a, you got a point. You're on your way to momentum. He's got all the pressure, but if you don't focus, it's, it's, he, he's going to get this point. Okay. For you, do you need to know why I said this point? Now remember, what's ISM? Individual. Do you ever go individual shot making? No. Never. Thank you, my brother. Never go ISM. It's unsustainable. You will, your players will go ISM. They will, they will go. It's inevitable. Because that's the temptation. It's a temptation and it's great. Okay? So when you get that floater, don't go for the lines. You just go like, bam, right down the middle. Right? Or a big target. I'm trying to illuminate for you what's really going on by asking questions. When you hit that, that backhand smash, fed like two hands, I want to ask you a question. Were you aiming here, here, or were you aiming here? The put, yeah, let's not say put away. Let's say that was the second shot of your two shot sequence. I stood on big target. Okay, so you were aiming there. about right here. Thank you. If you aim here, you will probably hit here. But if you aim here, it's out. Okay, because you got all the pressure on you, man. Okay, so go. So when did he win two points in a row? The first. The first. Oh, at the beginning of the game. Right. That's why he won. Right. I know. It's like, I know we say that, right, Rodney? Right? Yeah. We go, oh, yeah, right. No, I mean, I, it's, it's funny. I, I get exactly what you're saying. I think everybody as coaches think of it differently. Like the game, this game, we called it something else. We called it stop the bleeding. Like, okay. and trying not to get two in a row. Okay. It's like, it's like. You know, if you cut yourself, the first thing you want to do is stop the bleeding. Yeah. So, like, yeah. if they win a point, you have to get this yeah. next point back. Otherwise, it's going to continue. It's like a, yeah. it, it's that bucket with the empty sit. And so we would force kids to, like, think that way. First yeah. ball, if you lose that first one, you have to lock in because if they get another one, now this bucket's going to start opening up. But I get now the other aspect of he has the pressure. He's going to lock in without even knowing he's locking in. He's gonna this guy's gonna go nuts because he's like, oh yeah, I got, I got this, I'm locked in. It's, I can hit whatever I want. Like even the point yeah. he had at 40-15, yeah. Mark went angle, angle when you were saying big target and all of a sudden Mark got the advantage and went to the big target right. one. Okay, I get it. so let me just say this. Well, let me finish up and say this. Um, There's so much depth to this that when you start thinking about it, and, and I want to say this, words mean things, okay? And concepts are extremely powerful, okay? Um, with all due respect to stop the bleeding, okay? It doesn't yeah. really... Yeah. Right. Well, no, no, it's like, what, did, what does stop the bleeding have to do with me winning this point? Right. It just doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with it, right? And, and I'm peculiar about that. Like, I, I've become very peculiar about how, what I call things, okay? Because it's, a player may have to interpret what you just said. And I don't want my players to have to use brain power to interpret what, I, what I'm trying to tell you, okay? 
Because I may say something in the greatest intentions and you interpret it like, I don't know what the heck the coach is saying. But I gotta ask you two, because you you two really experienced this. Did you did you did you start to experience how your focus level changed when we started calling the conversion score first and then the game score? What did you experience? Um, maybe focus more. Let me break. Let me break. Stop his momentum, so I can start towards momentum. Remember that racket was in the middle. If you stop, right? Because until you win two in a row, you don't have the momentum. Okay? Did anybody win three in a row? Not in that game. Okay. What did you What did you sense, Matt? Uh, more pressure when you get down. You got to dial in. You got to dial in. What did you, how did you, how did you really calm yourself down? Like when I said big target, big shot to a big target, what did that make you feel like? Did it, did it? Well, it's, it's an easier thing. It's an easier thing to execute under pressure. Thank you. That's the point. A big target is easier to execute under pressure. Okay. Now, I did this test with, I've been doing this test with my players. I've been laying down like donuts in this the inside corner. If you go, if you want it. Just, I'm not going to go there. It's too much dirt. I need to stay in the clouds. Big target, big target. I've been laying down like donuts. And I'll tell players, if you can hit, if you can hit that donut, if you can hit that big target, I'm going to give you a bonus point. How many bonus points do you think I've been handing out? None. You can't hit the big target because it's, it's, a, it's a big target in relationship to the corner. But it's like right, it's, you know, the donut's that big. I mean, you'd think you could hit it. Fed can hit it, but you can't. Like, we think we're playing Fed on the other side. We're not playing Fed. Nobody's playing Fed. I'm not playing Fed. I wouldn't be here to be playing Fed. Okay? So, you got a question. Yeah. And we what are. What are you thinking about? But what, what are you, because I just reread the inner game, and it taught what to do to focus. So, what do you teach? To the game. The game teaches focus. The words that I'm using, the point system that is there, built in already, teaches you to focus. Then I use analogies. I'll say, it's focus is the picture, and pressure is the frame. And when you're up in the score, you're playing not to lose. I can afford to lose. So the pressure is lifted. The, fate, the frame, you ever seen a picture on the wall with no frame? It's hard to focus on it. Like you can walk right by it and go, oh. but if it has a really amazing frame, like if those, if those pictures didn't have that simple frame, we just walk right by it. You ever, anybody ever been to, a play or like a museum where they had like very ornate frames and it just made you focus on the picture even more, right? That's what I'm talking about, okay? So what the games are doing is it's innately bringing up the question of how do I focus? And then you as a coach use metaphors, stories, but try to keep it in context of what's really going on.